Good morning. My name's Dana Garrett. I'm a professional photographer and I'm also a retired Navy Chief Petty Officer who's a disabled veteran. And Tom has asked me to read the passage Scylla from his book Painted Ox. Before I read it though, uh, today is June 6th and 76 years ago massive naval and air assault force hit the beaches of northern France in World War II. 4,413 men died that day on those beaches. And I would like to take a moment to remember them. Tom has asked me to read the uh, passage in his book titled Scylla. So let me put on my reading eyes. They're in here somewhere. There we go. And I hope you enjoy this. Scylla. He has used every resource the Dorge has gifted him along this path. Yet there are times when he must return to the small fire in his own heart to illuminate his way, even now exhausted. Hungry, cold, and bruised, it does not fail him. Where the rain-soaked kindle meets the swollen earth, against all probabilities he finds rock, leaf, and limb, sheltered and dry protected treasures in an unprotected world, as if they were awaiting his arrival. He coaxes the spark, nurtures the flame, and then surrenders to sleep, his master's words swimming through his dreams. Fire is the voice of God speaking in tongues. Fire is the liberator of water, slipping the earthly bonds. Fire is the memory of stone being released to the heavens. Fire is the mother of the earth, born of desire. Fire is the seducer of wind, dancing in abandon for its beloved. Fire is the illuminator, the protector, the destroyer, and the giver of all life. The Dorge understands that to find the heart of fire, we must go underground, into the world of passion, emotion, uncertainty, where we are most raw, unformed, authentic. To reach him in this state, the Dorge must journey to his dream world and then lead him into her own, trailing with her an Ariadne thread. In the dream world, he must take the thread and use it to stitch together the inner and outer realms and to unravel a secret language long trapped between these worlds. Following her into her hidden world, new words flow from his lips with the ease of water falling from cliffs. A new dimension opens, a new path through which all sentient beings may pass. He does not know where the words will lead, nor can he direct their course. He does not own the words any more than the river belongs to the rock, the earth, or even the dorge. The sky did not create the water and does not know its course. He is the cloud and the stone. He is the lover and the beloved. This is no small thing. This is the end and the beginning, the turning over, the new world being born. I hope you all have a great day. I'm sitting in my backyard, which you can see is literally on the side of a mountain. But I like it. And even though it's an overcast day and the temperature is like 15 degrees cooler, I think I'm going to sit up here, drink my coffee, and enjoy the morning.
I hope you enjoy yours. Have a great day.